Hey everyone, welcome back to Christian Penguin 1990 again. My name is Matthew. Um, today's video, what we're going to do is we're going to go over the Genesis chapter 1, but not mainly just to focus on the creation part um, as it just try to explain it to everybody. But what we're going to focus on is the day and the night and uh, kind of the sun and the moon because I've had a few of my friends, you know, that from church and we talk back and forth and bounce ideas off each other and so on. And over the years, um, part of that people just can't really understand some of it. So I will read through all of chapter one, um, well, for the most of it, through the, uh, the days and so on. But so I won't really go through every single part of chapter one. So I guess I should take the back. I'm not going to read all of chapter one. I'm going to read uh, parts of it. Mainly, like I said, we're going to focus on the light in the day, darkness night, um, sun and the moon, and go from there. But of course, if I'm going to read Genesis, I've got to start with the very first part of it because that's very important because I need to cover that just a bit and you'll see why in a second. Okay, so Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Okay, now, I wanted to get through that real quick, and I'm going to cover something here. I'm kind of talking about like the gap theory and so on. But first, I want to cover the first one because a lot of translations now have heavens plural. Now, during my research through for creation and so on, I was trying to figure out why they others have it plural and only King James had it as singular. And to my, in my opinion, King James, the King James version, got it right because it starts off as heaven. And when I looked up the sixteen, you know, you can look up the what words meant back then in 1611 and so on. There's some websites that do that. Um, heaven just meant expanded place. Why? That's why it has a small H, not a big H. The capital H is heaven, as in heaven where the angels are and so on. Small H is just heaven, expanded place. So you had earth, expanded place, or outer space. So there's not multiple outer spaces, but at the same token, there could be multiple heavens, singular, depending on small uh not singular but small h depending on how it's meant um but later on in the chapter you read where god set up a firmament for where the birds were and separated the heavens which made it plural then that's the only that's when it became plural so the other translations jumped the gun and put heavens in the very first verse and that's not the case now what i was talking about with the gap theory the gap theory is that between verses 1 and 2, there was billions of years and so on. That's not the case. What you got to look at and think of the terms when it comes to the way it is written here. It goes from verse 1 into verse 2. Because at the end of verse 1, it says, and the earth. And then what it is, is verse 2 is describing the earth. That's all it's doing. There's not a big gap between the two and so on. It's just... Like if it was a novel, and um, they said, and here came Matthew. He had brown hair, da, da, you know, and it went through my description. Well, from saying here and walked in Matthew, and then it gave my description. There was not billions of years between the moment I walked in the door and it gave my description. That's that's what's happening here. It's just explaining what the Earth looked like. There's not billions of years between verse one and verse two. There is no gap. Okay, so yeah, they. Anybody doing that one, they just don't understand the verses. That's what it was standing for. There's no big gap between the two. Okay. But if you read it also, it is saying that the earth was actually all water. It was covered in nothing but water at the time, and land was not made till later. So, <clears throat> now here we go, the very first day. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Now that's very significant, because right now in our mental capacity, we consider the evening and morning and so on as dictated by the sun and the moon and the stars. However, what you're seeing here with the morning and the evening, when there's no moon and there's no sun, there's no stars yet, is the actual Earth's rotation. It's going through its twenty. It's going through its rotation right now, so that's what that's saying. When it rotates a full rotation, the evening, the morning, 
was the first day. So even though it's not, you know, just came, and the earth rotated and that was the day, that's what it's saying. The earth rotated. So it was doing its 24-hour rotation. It completed a day's turn, therefore it was now a new day. That's what it's saying there with the, and one side had light, the other side had dark. Now, then second day it goes into the firmament being made, uh, which then made it um, a plural for heavens. Okay, so let me skip down to where I was going to talk about. Uh, let's see, dry land was made on the third day. Let's see, brought forth grass. Of course, the evening of the morning. Oh, here we go. Fourth day, Genesis 1, chap uh, chapter 1, verse 14. And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so, and God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night. It's divide the light from the darkness, and God saw that it was good, and the evening and the morning were the fourth day. Now, this is describing the creation of the sun, the moon, the stars. Okay. Now, here is just my interpretation of this. But what God actually did is this. He took the light, made the sun. That's all. He just compressed all the light into the sun of our solar system. So instead of the light just being spread on this side of the earth and as it rotated this side would have darkness, he just took the light, compressed it into the sun itself. Okay, so that's how he made the sun. And that's just my opinion. There's, there's not scriptural or anything about that. That's just my opinion. Um, you can call it the Matthew theory, whatever you want to call it, the Christian penguin theory, it doesn't matter. Like I said, that is my opinion. It is not scriptural. It's just he took the light, made the sun, just compressed the light into the sun. That's just my opinion. Now, with the moon, everybody knows that that's what he's what it's talking about. And, of course, I've had some uh, atheists and so on say, well, you know, the moon doesn't make light. I said, yeah, I know. It reflects it. But even reflecting it, does it not cause light when it is dark? They said, yes. I said, okay, then, then that's, that's not wrong. It just reflects the light and... By reflecting the light, it gives off light. When it's a full moon, you can pretty much, depending on where you're at and how many trees are around you, you can still see very well at night. Um, it lights up the whole area. I've been in some areas where it's full moon, walked around, didn't even need a flashlight. I could see everything. So while it, we know that it reflects the light and doesn't make its own light, that does not mean that it's not still giving off light. Okay, So there's still nothing wrong with that verse, but that's the sun, moon. And then it just gave a quick snippet of, he made the stars also. So, in other words, here's, again, my opinion. Not really scriptural to an extent. Uh, it's partly scriptural, but not all the way scriptural. Um, because in scripture, it does say a couple of times where God expanded the heavens. You know, he stretched them out and so on. Um, now, some people have tried to say, well, if you're saying the star like, that stars started here, they're thinking of the earth here and the star was right here and then he went from while standing on the planet and threw the star out. Probably not. Probably the earth's here, God's way over here somewhere where you can't, you know, like I said, you can't even fit him in the webcam. So he's over here, the earth behind him or whatever, and he's just placing stars. You know, and, but see, people want to try to put stuff into their brain as to how it worked and and so on. And they're saying, well, if the star was too close, it would burn the earth up and everything else. Well, that's possible. But the same token, you're thinking that God put started with the star on the, the surface or close to or close enough to the earth to where it would burn up. What if God was just, you know, like this or like he had a basket or, you know, something like that? And like I said, that's not really scriptural. That's just my um, impression of how it might have happened. But with that, <clears throat> like I said, with that being said, so many people try to humanize the way it happened. Um, God, powerful enough, all he did was speak and things appeared. So if God said, let there be stars, 
Who's to say the stars didn't just appear where they were at? Um, and then from there, after he created, he just expanded it and kept expanding the universe. And, you know, after it was created, um, that day until he finished creation, just, you know, on day five, he expanded some more. Day six, he expanded until he rested on day seven. Um, which I'll get, I want to get onto that one in a second too, because I've heard a couple of people, you know, make fun of it and so on. I want to cover that as well. But, so yeah. Okay, so when it says, before the sun and the moon, there there was evening and morning. The light was on one side, the darkness was on the other. The earth was making one full 24 hour rotation. And then when it, in uh, the fourth day, God made the sun, moon, and stars. What God did is he compressed all the light into the sun. And made the sun that day and then of course the moon reflects the light from the sun but still gives off light so in that instance it is still giving off light without actually making its own light just due to the reflection but it still causes light for you to see so therefore it is still not um, against scripture and so on now um everybody knows on the seventh day God rested and made the Sabbath <clears throat> and the reason I wanted to cover that real quick in this video as well is because I've heard a lot of people say, well, some God you serve, he after six days of creation, he had to take a break and take a nap. And no, that's that's not what it's saying. What it's saying is God worked for six days and then he rested the seventh. Yes, he rested, as in he work was done. There was nothing else to do. Creation was finished. He didn't have to create anymore. So he, you know, just didn't do anything the seventh day. In other words, he was done. So let's put it in your terms. Um, you work Monday through Saturday, 12 hours a day. Let's just say 12 hours a day, you work Monday through Saturday. On Sunday, you have, you're have you done with work Monday through Saturday. What are you going to do? Go to work again, or are you going to go relax, take a break, go out back, sit in the hammock, you know, whatever? You're going to relax. You're going to rest. You're going to take a break because you're done working. You don't have any more work to do. And that's all that's saying, okay? It's not saying that God wasn't strong enough or powerful enough that he couldn't keep going. It's that the work was done. There was nothing else to do. So he rested. In other words, he took a break from work. And while resting, he still created because he made the Sabbath, which was since he took a day to do nothing but, you know, kick back, so to speak. He didn't really kick back. He was still active and everything. But <clears throat> he took a day that he was done with work, didn't do any other creating, he was done completely, and said, you know what, we're going to make this the Sabbath day, so after six straight days of work, a person should at least have a break. So whenever you work hard enough and you need a day to rest, that's where your days off come. That's where the idea of days off come from for many people. And the original work schedules, I remember growing up back in the 80s, if somebody was open on Saturday until... Um, say 10 o'clock at night that was outlandish but I remember when they first switched in my area that I mean o overall probably across the country it was different in different areas but where I was at when they decided to make it they would keep stores open on Sunday from 1 to 6 p.m. people had a fit they were shocked because that interrupted their day of rest you, you see what I'm saying so that's just all that's saying it's not saying that God was weak when he got done creating, he wasn't all powerful. So that's not what that verse is saying. That's not what it's saying when he said he took the he um, took the day off and made you know and rested. It's just the work was done, so he rested from doing work. That's all it's saying. He had plenty of energy. He's God. He's the creator. He's not a human. He could go on and go on and go on, and it would not stop. But there was nothing else to create. Creation was perfect when he finished, and he was done. So that's what that's saying. And hopefully I explained that better, but or good enough for you to kind of understand where I was trying to go with it. I mean, sometimes I'll try to explain stuff, and while I get, I understand what I'm saying in my head, and I try to talk to people about it. It sometimes it doesn't come out the right way, and so on. But so hopefully for Genesis, this cleared up about the Earth's rotation, the the light and the dark, the evening and the morning being the days, and the sun, the moon, the stars being created, and so on. And like I said, you can call that the Matthew theory the or because of the channel, the Christian Penguin 1990 theory. But I honestly believe that's what happened is the light was just spread out on one side. 
and then you had the darkness on the other side of the earth and then when God made the sun all he did was he grabbed the light and turned and put and brought it together into the sun that's all I'm that's my opinion so hopefully um, this cleared up a few things for you guys when it came to these and if you like this video you know please feel free to stay tuned to the channel I'll be posting more videos um, can also pay attention to the channel because we'll I'll be posting more videos about why I pray until um, we finish off that book I'll be doing some more uh, apologetic videos I'll be doing some creation videos discussing like uh, Big Bang Theory the speed of light so on like that and from the creationist point of view but just <clears throat> hopefully y'all are getting um, some good information out of the videos and hopefully it's helping you somewhat get cleared up but as always just go do your own research don't just take my word for it because um, I will say I've I know some people that they'll see a video on YouTube and that's that's now the truth. That's the fact. Well, there's a video, so that that means it's fact. No, just because there's a video out there on either the creation side or the evolution side does not mean that is the fact. That is the end of it. You don't have to search any further. No, go out, backtrack, do your own research, like I've done. I've done it on both sides, creation, evolution. I've weighed how they've interpreted the evidence, which I'll go into really in depth on uh, videos later about evidence interpretation and I'm still a biblical creationist and like I said biblical is six day creation and under 10,000 years for the earth age which there are a bunch of evidences that people give to show that the earth is young but they're all scattered so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get them all together and I will go through it and I think the last time I checked my list there was probably about a hundred um so I'll do a video I'll probably separate them into 20 per video, but I'll do videos on that about um, to what people say show that the earth is actually young versus the dating methods that try to say they're old. And like I said, I'll do a video about dating methods as well. Um, and there's also another video I want to do. I'm collecting the verses, double checking them, make sure that they are the verses that I'm thinking of or that they are correct in um, what they're saying. Because the reason I say that is I believe the Bible is 100% true. That's not what I'm saying. Make sure the verse is right, whatever. But what I am saying, the reason I'm saying that is because it's 100 verses that are scientifically proven today. And I will try to backtrack and find the dates of when modern science proved what was already written in the Bible thousands of years ago. And let me cover that real briefly about the thousands of years ago thing. Okay, so many have said, well, the Bible was written in 1611. Okay, the Bible was translated into English in 1611. The Bible had been written for thousands and thousands of years in the Old Testament, New Testament, hundreds of years um, in Greek. Old Testament was Hebrew, then became Arabic, and then it was written later in Greek, um, New Testament-wise. So, it was not written in 1611. That is when they translated it into English in 1611, okay? So there's been a few people that have tried to say that, and um, I've run across them, you know, where I live at, and so on, and I have to correct them. And it's not so much where it's, um, oh, you're wrong, so I have to correct you. No, it's, sir, you have the wrong information. It was translated in 1611. It was not written in 1611. It was translated from the text from thousands of years ago by Moses. And, oh, speaking of which, Moses. Let me cover that real quick because that's a very interesting topic for those that don't know about it. Many have said that Moses authored Genesis. No, Moses did not author Genesis. What Moses did is he took the writings from Adam. He took the writings from Noah, Abraham, so on, and he just put them together into the book of Genesis. So really Noah, or Noah, excuse me, really Moses is the editor of Genesis. Now, because he put them together, people said, well, he authored it. No, he didn't author it. What I honestly believe is happened, he, I think Adam wrote a book. I think that um, even Cain wrote a book, which is why you get the lineage of Cain and so on, and all those different lineages um, and, and from Noah and whatever. I think they all attributed, so it's probably like six or seven authors in Genesis, but what Moses did is he took like, okay, here's what Adam wrote down. Let me put that as the first few chapters. Here's what Cain wrote. Let me put that, you know, and he just put them, excuse me, he just put them together and made the book of Genesis out of editing or, 
Well, I say editing, but what I'm really saying is he just took the sheets and put it like that, and then here's the book. I just put them all together in one book called Genesis, the beginning. So, really, he didn't write the book. All he did is he took the writings that others did, and he put them together, and we credit him with writing Genesis. <clears throat> so, But that's how I think Genesis was written. It was Adam wrote his, Cain wrote his, and then they Moses, all he did was, okay, well, let me... Um, try to edit it like okay well here's Adam so that's going to be the first few chapters well here's Cain he'll be chapter 5 6 whatever here's Noah okay so he goes here here you know he tried to make sure he had him in the right order is what I mean by editing I don't think he actually took stuff out or anything like that but so that's how the book of Genesis came about that's Sun, Moon and Stars uh, the Earth's rotation and so on uh, talking about heaven being singular versus plural and uh, it's Sabbath day. So hopefully, again, uh, this video is a little longer than I expected, but hopefully, again, that this um, was able to help you with some of the information. Uh, please continue to go out and do your own research. Uh, hit those study Bibles. Hit um, Read your regular Bible, then go hit study Bible. If yours is like mine, it's got a middle column that has other verses you can backtrack. And, okay, well, this adds to it. This takes, you know, and so on. Uh, talk to your pastors. Talk to fellow church members. And if you are not a believer in Christ, um, I really wish you were, but <clears throat> of course that's your decision. Um, maybe you're starting to get interested. Maybe you're just curious and you're just curious what others believe, why they believe it. And I'm hoping that this is helping rationally explain some of it when it comes to the apologetic side, which is the Bible, and with the creation side when I get more to those videos as well. Um, but if you get more interested in it, uh, one of the things that, one of the places I really like to read research creation sidewise is through um, Institute for Creation Research or ICR.org, I think it is, or .com. I can't remember off the top of my head. I will put a link in the video uh, when I post it to my YouTube channel. But, and the reason I like them is they will actually show both sides. They really do, um, and a lot of the research they do, uh, <coughs> excuse me. One of the things, um, for example, for example, they were just talking about zircon crystals. They and they went through the whole step, like, and they showed, um, well, if you tested it, they tested it this way, and they got, um, I think it was something billion years old. I mean, they went through it and they showed the evolution side. And they said, okay, here's what we found, and we're adding to it, and we, you know, comparing. Well, if it's billions of years, then how is this, you know? And that's what they do. They just compare them, but. What a lot of people do is they say, well, because they're creationists, they don't know about science, so you don't listen to them. Just ignore them. Don't listen. Why not listen to them? You, I just don't understand why there can't be two opinions. Because I've said this before, and I'll say it again. You have empirical science right here. Right, like, right here is empirical science. Two worldviews. Creation, evolution. That's it. Science stands alone. Period. Empirical, factual science will always stand alone because it's a fact. It is proven. There's no more theory behind it. It's just fact. That's it. It's there. Um, but when it comes to the others, uh, creation, evolutionism, what you're looking at is the fact, factual evidence, and you're giving your interpretation to it. It's a view. It's not fact. It's just your view. And like I said, I'll really get into that in the creation side of it. <clears throat> but so yes you can have differing opinions but you can also work together I have seen creationists and evolutionists work together several times to make you know to do good on something like medicine or whatever and it wasn't until afterwards that they realized that they had differing world views but they were fine they were friends they talked whatever so I don't so this thing of well because you're creationist I can't be your friend because you're uneducated no that's wrong that's a lie you know you and creationists do understand science, and in fact, majority of the, almost all the science fields were founded by creationists. And I'll give you um, that list in a later video on um, the creation side. But sorry, this video is going a little longer than I wanted to. Uh, so, like again, like I said, again, hopefully this helps. And just stay tuned to the channel. I'll be posting more why pray videos, and I'll be posting more apologetic videos along with creation videos. So hopefully, y'all have a blessed evening. Um, I know that this uh, storm or whatever it is is coming through Bonnie. Uh, we're getting drenched right now. I can hear it outside. But 
Hopefully y'all stay safe. God bless. And may you always have a happy life in whatever you do. And I'll see you guys later on the next podcast.